Manipulating entire objects is fun, but what you really want to do is get down to the components of an object. So now let's look at edit mode. Edit mode is just one of several modes you can toggle into for modifying and transforming objects. With our cube selected, we can click on this drop down menu at the top left of the 3D viewport and see all the object interaction modes available for this type of object. Let's switch from object mode to edit mode. The cube looks a little different now in edit mode because we're looking at the components that make up this mesh object. These are its vertices, edges, and faces. For those of you who are brand new to 3D, a vertex is a single point in space. An edge is the line that can be drawn between two vertices. And a face is the area described by three or more connected vertices. It's about as fundamental as you can get with 3D, and it underlies everything we do when modeling. Depending on how you wish to edit your mesh, you are able to switch between selection modes using these icons here, or by using the number keys on the keyboard, one for vertices, two for edges, and three for faces. For now, we'll stick to vertex select mode. Either click on this icon or hit the numeral one. Selecting vertices in edit mode is exactly like selecting objects. Let's practice a quick refresher. Left click on a vertex, it becomes, or stays, orange, and everything else is deselected. If you hold down shift, you can select more vertices. Notice how as we select a second vertex, then a third, the edge between these vertices becomes selected. And if we manage to select all the vertices that surround a face, the face now becomes selected also. You can use your selection tools in edit mode as well. You can box, circle, or lasso select. A is the hotkey to select all, and Alt A does the reverse. Let's now select a single vertex and delete it. Delete has two hotkeys the delete key and the X key. In edit mode, these will bring up the exact same delete options menu. This will become handy down the line, but for now, let's just choose the first option and delete this single vertex. If you needed anything to drill down the interdependencies of vertices, edges, and faces, this ought to do it. Without this vertex, the three edges around it could not exist. And without those edges, those three faces that got deleted could not exist. We'll undo this and select two vertices. But this time, let's choose the option Edges. Hit the hotkey for delete. Now only the edge between these two vertices is deleted, and along with it, the adjacent faces. Let's undo this one more time and select four vertices around this face and choose faces. We'll hit delete. Everything seems to remain intact except for the deleted face. That's because the edges still have vertices at either end, so they still can exist. While we're in edit mode, let's do one more thing. We'll add a primitive shape to this cube. I'm going to go with a sphere. It is added in edit mode with all its vertices selected. I can hit G to grab, Y to constrain it to the Y axis and move it over so it's not inside the cube. I'll now toggle back into object mode. I can do this by going to the same object interaction modes menu, or I can hit tab. Tab will toggle you between the mode you're in and the previous mode that you were using. If you wanna bring up all the modes as an overlaid radial menu, the hotkey is Control Tab. Back in object mode, you'll notice that even though there is a sphere and a cube, there is only one origin point, and if I grab it, both the cube and the sphere move together. This is because all of this geometry is stored in the same 
mesh data block. We can see the data block in the outliner to understand this a little more clearly. Next to the object name cube, there's an arrow. Currently it's pointing right, but if we click on it, it will point down, revealing a nested item beneath. This is also named cube, but its icon looks like three vertices connected by three edges. This is not a coincidence. We're looking at the data block for editable mesh data here. The object level is like a container for data blocks. It is named cube because when it was generated, the object was a cube. We can rename this to whatever we want by double clicking on the name and then typing something, primitives for example. Now we won't get two data blocks inside just because we added a sphere. All the vertices are part of the same data block. Blender doesn't see cube or sphere. It simply sees vertices, edges, and faces. The object container is what we transform when we are in object mode. The mesh data block is what we transform when we're in edit mode. We can separate and join objects as well. Let's toggle back into edit mode, either by hitting tab or control tab and selecting edit mode from the radial menu or using the drop down. And let's select all the vertices in this sphere. I'll do this by selecting one vertex, then with my cursor hovering over the sphere, I'll hit L. This is the hotkey for selecting anything that's linked to the selection. I'll go to my mesh menu and go down to separate. The hotkey for this is P and I'll click on selection. The sphere and cube are now separate objects with their own data blocks contained inside. Because the original object was named primitives, we now have a second object in our outliner named primitives.001. I'm going to rename everything here so there's less confusion. So we'll name this cube, this sphere. We'll name the data block inside the cube as cube data and the data block inside sphere as sphere data. Making sure we're back in object mode, we can select the sphere independently of the cube now. But you'll also notice that the sphere's origin point is still the same as the cubes. If we try to scale, rotate, or move it, it will be transformed in relation to this point. We can adjust where an object's origin is. Let's select the sphere, go to the object menu, and set origin. We have plenty of options here too. The first two are the most obvious. If we set geometry to origin, Blender will place the geometry so that it surrounds the origin and the origin is centered. But that's like moving the sphere back to where the cube was. Let's undo this. Let's now select origin to geometry. It does roughly the same thing, but in reverse, leaving the sphere where it is, but placing the origin at its center. I'll shift right click somewhere to reposition my cursor. And now with my sphere selected, I'll go to object, set origin, origin to 3D cursor. And as you'd expect, here is where it jumps to. It doesn't really make a lot of sense to set an origin in such an arbitrary manner. Where it comes in really handy is when we position the origin somewhere specific for this geometry. Let's say, for example, we want this sphere to scale or rotate from its base. I'll toggle into edit mode, swing my view around so I can see the vertices at the base of the sphere, and select this vertex at its pole. I'll now snap the cursor to this selection by hitting Shift S, and from the radial menu, I can select Cursor to Selection. Then back in object mode, I can set the origin to 3D cursor. We can hit S to scale, and Z to constrain the scale to the Z axis. Now when we scale the sphere, it doesn't scale from its center, but from its base. Let's do the reverse now. I'll select the cube, then I'll shift select the sphere. I'll go to Object, Join, or use the hotkey Control J. Let's observe what has happened in the outliner. We no longer have a cube object, only a sphere. And we also only have sphere data as the data block. This is because it's merged everything into 
our active object. Also, the only origin point that exists is the spheres. Now, when objects should be joined or when they should remain separate is a matter of preference. Obvious examples would be an instance like this. A table consists of several transformed cubes, a tabletop, some supports, and four legs. It makes sense that all of these separate meshes should be joined into one object named table. But if we had cups, plates, cutlery, all of these objects would be better to have as separate objects. Now, once you're comfortable with some of these concepts, you're ready to move on to the next lesson. <laughs>